Hello and welcome. My name is Jordan and I'm here today to say that you are love worthy. Now today I'm talking about a question that a lot of people ask and that is, are there homosexual couples in the Bible? The answer to that, surprisingly enough, is yes. There are a few different homosexual couples in the Bible, but the one that I'm going to talk about today is Jonathan and David. This story can be found in 1 Samuel 18 through 2 Samuel chapter 1. And it also mentions Jonathan and David just a little bit in 2 Samuel chapter 9. So in regards to this video today and researching it, I honestly didn't have to do a whole lot. I sat down with my Bible, New International Version and the New Revised Standard Version, and I just read 1 Samuel chapter 18 until the end of 2 Samuel. And I was surprised to find verse after verse after verse confirming that Jonathan and David were a couple, not only romantically, but also emotionally. And that is very, very prevalent throughout that entire Bible story. So what I'm going to be doing for this video is simply reading the Bible verses, the translations we have today, and you can decide for yourself if Jonathan and David were a couple. Because I think the evidence shows, yes, absolutely. So the first verse we're going to start off with today is 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. And it says, after David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. So a little backstory here. Uh, Saul is the king. Jonathan is the son of Saul the king. And then we have David. Later in the story, Saul becomes very angry with David and is jealous and wants to kill him. Uh, Jonathan loves him as Jonathan loves David, which again, we'll read those verses. Um, and that's where we'll get a lot of the scriptures pointing out um, that Jonathan is saddened by his father's actions. So the next scripture we have here is 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 3 through 4. And it says, And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. So we have here again, Jonathan professing his love to David, has a very kind gesture of giving David uh, his tunic, his sword, his bow, etc. Some biblical scholars attribute this to ritual um, and ceremony. Other biblical scholars attribute this to the close connection that Jonathan and David have together. The next verse is 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 1, and it reads, Saul spoke with his son Jonathan and with all his servants about killing David, but Saul's son Jonathan took great delight in David. So again, we have Saul wanting to harm David, and we have Jonathan having great delight in David. So then we have 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 3 through 4, and it reads, but David also swore, your father knows well that you like me. And he thinks, do not let Jonathan know this or he will be grieved. But truly as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, there is but a step between me and death. Then Jonathan said to David, whatever you say, I will do for you. So in this, we have a conversation between David and Jonathan. Uh, David is expressing his concern to Jonathan, saying, hey, I'm very close to death. If your father gets near me, we have to be careful. And we have Jonathan in turn saying, whatever you say, I will do for you. This shows a close, unconditional love bond. So speaking of unconditional love, we also have 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 17. And it reads, Jonathan made David swear again by his love for him, for he loved him as he loved his own life. So right here, I would like to point out something that I thought was very interesting when reading it. David had several different wives during this whole experience. He also had several different concubines later on. And throughout all of these verses, David never says he loves his wives. He never says he loves his concubines. Instead, the only love he has expressed is the love to Jonathan. And I think that is very important. Um, the next 
line that we have here is 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 34. And it reads, Jonathan got up from the table in fierce anger. On that second day of the feast, he did not eat because he was grieved at his father's shameful treatment of David. So we have here, Jonathan is so distraught that David may potentially be harmed that he can't even eat. He doesn't feel well. This is a feast where I'm sure there are magnificent food, foods everywhere. But Jonathan just doesn't care. He just wants David to be safe and sound and quite frankly with him. So we have, speaking of with him, 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 41. At this point, Jonathan is telling David, yes, my father is going to kill you and we have to go our separate ways for now. And this says at the end of the verse, then they kissed each other and wept together, but David wept the most. So we just have a very intimate scene between Jonathan and David. Um, I just see them as embracing. They kissed each other, wept together, and that's that. Now, unfortunately, after this, uh, they do go their separate ways. And Jonathan ends up dying in battle. Saul also ends up dying. Um... And then David does a lament. And this, I think, is the key verse to understanding the type of relationship that Jonathan and David has. This goes back to, again, David never professed his love to a woman. But listen to what he says about Jonathan. In 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 26, it says, I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that of a woman. So I'm going to re repeat that last part. Your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that of a woman. So here we have it, folks. David loved Jonathan with all his heart. Their bond was incomparable to anything that he had had. Um, and this just shows it. He, there are also other people in the uh, biblical story who have died, and Jonathan would do laments to, th or excuse me, he uh, David would do laments towards them or about them, but none of them professed to the great love like he did with Jonathan, which also is very important. The only other verse that I'd like to bring up is Second Samuel chapter nine verse one. This is after Jonathan has died. And David, and it says, David asked, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? So after Jonathan had died, we don't know how much time has passed at this point. But after Jonathan had died, we see that David is still trying to do right by him. Since Jonathan was from Saul's house, he told him that he will not harm anybody. And so David just wants to do right by him and is thinking about him still uh, after his death. So that is what we have, folks, for Jonathan and David. If you don't believe me, read it for yourself. Just open up your Bible and read. Um, I would recommend reading the New Revised Standard Version. That is the one that is uh, arguably the most accurate uh, translation that we have today according to most biblical scholars. If you're looking for an easier read, I would recommend the New International Version. Uh, but of course, that version is completely up to you and whatever you prefer. So if any of you have any questions about the content of this video today, feel free to reach out to our Facebook page. You can find it by searching Love Worthy LGBT. And you, this is all going to be one word. Uh, you can also reach out to us on our Instagram as well. Again, love for the LGBT. Um, other than that, folks, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Be blessed. Bye.